Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com here, and today I've got nine new things to know about the new Wahoo Bolt 2, Wahoo Bolt 2021, Wahoo Bolt. It's still named the Wahoo Bolt, as it says in the package, but it's new, it's totally different. It's got color screen, it's got a bunch of things, all those nine things I'm gonna talk about. Now, one might say it's just basically a roam in a smaller package, and hundred bucks cheaper. And, yeah, they'd be pretty much correct, but not entirely correct. In fact, there's a bunch of features that are on this unit that are not on the Wahoo Roam right there. So I'm going to talk through all of those. However, before you like judge how much this thing is beeping, by the way, I cannot get it to stop beeping. So we're just having to go with it. Uh, before you judge whether or not you want to buy the unit based on all those new features, definitely watch the full video through because I got to talk through, got to talk through some of my testing experience because it, it has not been... We'll get there. Anyways, the first feature on the list is full mapping. Uh, now, in the past, the, with the Wahoo Bolt that I have over here on the left-hand side, uh, you can see there's like a black and white etched uh, outline of the roads, the maps, and all that kind of stuff, but it's actually not routable. I Meaning it didn't actually know where you were on the road, it just simply guessed based on the turn-by-turn -turn instructions that it had from a routing provider like Kamut or whatever the case may be. Versus on the Roam and on the new Bolt, it'll go ahead and actually know what the underlying route is. And that's important if you get lost, because in the past, with the rerouting, it would just simply tell you how to get back to the route using little arrows. Versus with the Roam and the new Bolt, it'll actually tell you turn by turn how to get back using the maps it has within it. So you can see this right here when I went off road, I've got chevrons that basically show me how to get back on the route, uh, and it's got a new route. And so in this case, I was blocked by construction, I had to follow a different route, and then it got me back to the route that I wanted to, and then from there it resumed. The next thing on the list is, as you see right there, it's a full color display. Uh, 64 colors in fact, which is, 56 more colors than the Rome. The Rome actually only has an eight color screen display and they do some creative shading and stuff with grays and whatnot uh, versus the Bolt 2.0 is a 64 color screen display. Now these additional colors beyond the Rome are used for a bunch of new data fields uh, and throughout the unit itself, but especially data fields related to power and heart rate. It's here is the next new feature, which is heart rate and power screens that are tied to your heart rate and power zones via color coordination. So you can see this right here on my phone app where I've got my heart rate zones there, my power zones, and the power zones have colors on them, that orange, yellow, green, blue, dark blue, and then active recovery down at the bottom, uh, and the same with my heart rate zones. I'll see these exact same color coding on the data fields themselves out when I'm riding. I can change these, of course, if I want to, I can auto-calculate them, it's all pretty straightforward. The same is true as well for turn by turn navigation. You'll see new coloring on those to make it a little more clear as to what's going on. I'd love to know how many times this has chirped in this entire video. If someone wants to count and put it down the bottom there, that'd be like an awesome contest. The next thing is an increase in storage. Now the original Rome had four gigabytes of space on it, which would seem like enough, uh, but in reality it wasn't to be able to include the vast majority of the world's mapping data on it. Uh, so on the Bolt 2.0, they increased that to 16 gigabytes of data. That in turn means they can preload a bunch of different geographies of map data. Uh, so they've got all of North America, all of Europe, all of Australia, a bunch of other kind of random other places as well, preloaded on the unit itself. Don't worry, if you don't have the regions that you want on the unit when it arrives at your doorstep, or if you go travel somewhere else, you can just simply connect it to Wi-Fi and choose which regions you want. All of the maps are free across the board, and they've got global maps for everywhere with all the cycling data built into it. It's just like before, except now you have to do less map changing when you travel, because most all the regions you're likely to go to are preloaded ahead of time, unless you're going to like, Ushuaia or something like that, in which case it's probably not in here by default. However, there's another benefit of this added storage space, which is that they've baked in the elevation data into the map set itself. In the past, Wahoo baked that into some of the route information that came from a routing provider, uh, so if you had a predefined course, uh, versus this is now baked into the data for all the mapping, no matter where you are in the world. That's something they can't do on the Rome because there's not enough space. Again, that 16 gigs gave them the extra capacity to go ahead and put that into the mapping data on the unit itself. Okay, and a quick note, if you find this video useful or interesting, whack that like button at the bottom there, or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. It really helps with the channel and the video quite a bit. So next year we got a minor thing, but I'll stick a couple things together in this item just for the fun of it. Uh, you may have noticed if you look carefully, the buttons now are concave, meaning they like pop up. Uh, and so you can see if I go like this, the buttons pop up as opposed to the divots in the past on the bolt and the roam over here, they go down like this, uh, so like that you can see. Uh, and this is something that Wahoo says, especially for folks using gloves, it's much easier to press those, press those buttons. And I agree. I know some people like the divots. 
I've always found them horrendous. Uh, so I love these new buttons. They're just easier to hit. Uh, you don't have to like jam your finger with gloves inside that little hole and hopefully make it all work. Also, for lack of anywhere else to put it, weight. The weight's it's increased a little bit, but still less than others. Uh, so you can see right here, if I go ahead and I hand it in a scale. So the existing bolt comes in at, get the shadow off there, 61 grams. The new bolt comes in at 70 grams. The Rome little beef chick there comes in at 94 grams. Uh, for comparison, the Garmin Edge at 530, about 20 bucks more, is 79 grams right there. Uh, so, you know, it's definitely a little bit heavier, but I don't think it really matters too much. Uh, it's also a little bit bigger. If you look right here, you can see it's a little bit uh, more forward out there, uh, a tiny bit uh, thicker as well that way. So I don't think it really matters a ton to most people, but uh, in case you're wondering about that, now you know no longer have to wonder. Speaking of other things they've changed is now USB-C as opposed to micro USB. So you can see that in the bottom there, USB-C charging. Also, this little door right here is replaceable. Uh, in the past, if you accidentally ripped off your door, your door was gone for good, no more doors. Uh, versus now, you can get that swapped out if you do manage to rip it off uh, and your unit is just fine. Now keep in mind, this port is still IPX7 waterproof, uh, meaning you can like fall in the canal for 30 minutes at a meter deep and you'll be fine. You'll also be fine for rain as I tested quite well in the last Ow, while, hurts. including just a couple hours ago. Uh, no issues there, also no issues with hail, lightning, thunder, it was all just fine. Now with that USB-C port, there's the next item, which is fast charging. Uh, so they've used USB-C fast charging to go ahead and get this fully charged up uh, significantly faster using five amp charging or up to five amp charging as opposed to the previous 1.5 amps. I suspect for most people, that's not a huge deal like the other stuff, especially on a bike computer where you're gonna like leave it charging for a while, but it is handy if you need to quickly get a boost of charging on this before you head out, it saves you a bit of time. So as we go to our final item before we talk a little bit about stability and stuff, my Bolt has actually just installed the firmware, it's decided now is the time to do that, but that's all right. So they've expanded out the number of text messaging services they support uh, to show notifications on the unit itself. So in the past, they just did text messaging, now they've added that to be WhatsApp, uh, line, signal, and telegraph. Uh, in fact, that'll actually go to all the past Wahoo devices as well. Uh, so it's not just gonna be limited to the Bolt there too. That means you'll get the notifications on the device assuming that you've got your phone paired to it. Uh, there's no cellular or anything like that within this, so it has to come from your phone to here, uh, and that'll chirp just like that, and it'll show you the text message. Okay, so with all the newness covered, we got a chat. Because this, this has been rough. Uh, this has been arguably the roughest thing I've ever tested bike computer wise, maybe even device wise in a long, long while. Um, and I, I fully understand that this is likely like teething bugs. And you know, at some point between now and probably soonish, uh, they're gonna fix these things uh, because they have to, like they're, it, they can't sell it without it. But they are starting to sell it. As of the moment this video goes live, Wahoo's starting to sell it. I can probably go to my local bike shop that's a big Wahoo dealer, like a couple hundred meters away and buy this unit right now and start riding with it. And as it stands right now, for me, it is totally unusable. And I wish I could like have a better story to paint, but at the end of the day, I can't go out with ride without it crashing one or two times. Uh, it's usually delayed in the mapping by sometimes 30 to 90 seconds in mapping and data fields, everything. Strava segments trigger after I've completed the Strava segments. Like they show me I'm starting a segment and I already finished it miles ago in some cases. Uh, I had a ride yesterday that was so bad, it didn't even tell me I was off course for six miles. I literally went six miles the wrong way uh, before I thought something might be wrong and looked down and it, it had given up uh, and I get it. Like I'm sure, and I'm not I'm sure, I know Wahoo is working on this. They've got a bunch of engineers trying to figure it out, uh, but ultimately companies send me things so that I can give you my honest feedback. And I've been trying now for a week to get a successful clean ride and like one ride, I just want one ride where everything works. And I can't, whether it's heart rate sensor dropouts or trainer incompatibilities or power meter dropouts or gearing dropouts or crashes and reboots or maps like, I can't get a clean ride. And I know some people can. I know there are people out there that I trust, reviewers like Desfit and GP Llama that have had really good luck with it and have been great. And it's probably because of where they live. In talking to Wahoo, they think that it's mostly tied to the density of the bike routes and the detail I have and the map tiles in this particular area. And I live in Amsterdam. And so here in central Amsterdam, there's a lot of that stuff. And they're digging into it and hopefully they'll figure it out. Um, but I don't know when that'll be. And it, maybe it could literally be tomorrow afternoon, the moment after I release this video, or it could be a month from now, or it could be two months from now. And I 
I don't know. So my point there being is I will put an update in the description down below. You can see there whether or not this issue is fixed. You can also see my full enough review, whatever that may be, uh, link down below there. I will have a whole section dedicated to this and whether or not and when it is fixed. Uh, and hopefully it will be fixed. And again, it doesn't impact everyone. It seems to impact like city dwellers like me more than people that uh, live further afar from a city. But assuming they sort that out, assuming like they get all that figured out, then this does seem like a good option on the Wahoo front that costs you know, considerably less than the Rome, which as I said before, uh, and I said for a long while, I felt was overpriced compared to the Garmin 830, that essentially the same price point. And then here, the Garmin 530 is also essentially the same price point. And that really gets to the kind of the general theme between choosing between Wahoo and Garmin. Uh, and there's lots of other options out there. There are stages with their M50 at uh, even cheaper than this, I believe. There's the Hammerhead Crew 2 at a little bit more of the Wahoo Rome price point. Those those are all great options that are out there uh, that you have in this entire landscape. But I think a lot of people are tending to choose between Wahoo and Garmin. Uh, and ultimately, it comes down to simplicity with the Wahoo ecosystem or more features with the Garmin one. It's as simple as that. And people can debate that all day like politics. That's all it really comes down to at this point in time. There is not any like significant or really any new features uh, when it comes to software features on the Bolt 2 compared to the Rome. Uh, it's basically stayed the same for the last couple of years. So I wouldn't necessarily let that be a differentiator. I would send I would instead focus on the hardware changes here, the form factor, the color, uh, of course, the added uh, additional color data fields, for example, as the main drivers compared to the Rome itself. So with that, hopefully you found this interesting, useful, or something or other. If so, go ahead and whack that like button down the bottom there, or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. There's more to come. There's definitely more to come. I hope to have an update on this at some point down the road as well, uh, but there's plenty of other things in the, in the hopper. That's, that's for certain. With that, have a good one.